Shalom, beloved. This is a word. Um, this is the second time I've tried this to put this out here. Um, broken thing. Sometimes in our lives, whether we tell others or not, we go through experiences that leave us broken. It can be a disappointment. It can be a revelation about something where we thought someone felt one way and we recognize they are another way. It can be through the loss of a child, through estrangement. It can be um, recognizing that just because somebody has a blood tie to you in your family, that they they you recognize they don't mean you any good. They actually are so jealous. They want your full-blown destruction, broken things. They are truth. He who increases in knowledge increases in sorrow, broken things. We can have sudden death, sudden sickness. And people think we're so strong that, you know, we can bear up while we watch this person slowly die in front of us, you're supposed to be atlas. And there's nobody supporting you. There's nobody understanding how you feel. There, there's nobody. While you are in this state of broken and you wanna fix it, but you don't know how. In the midst of it, the spirit tells you you need to go to the potter's house. You find yourself standing in the doorway of the potter's house. And sometimes the break is so great. It's so many pieces scattered in so many directions that even when you try to tell your story, you know you cannot put to words. It's it's ineffable. You cannot, you cannot express the intensity of it. it 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 changes it moves in waves it transforms between pain shock sadness the desire to run the i can't handle it why me it it it's broken things but you find yourself at the potter's house and anybody in a state of broken right now Trust me, I understand what it's like to be a broken thing. I want to share something with you, beloved, that when I was talking to Yah and I'm standing at the potter's house, I'm like, this thing is so broken, I cannot fix it. And we find ourselves having to carry it we find ourselves having to deal with it with an ongoing effect. And yet, what do I do when it's having an effect on me? It's, it's, it's breaking me. And everybody wants to tell me how strong I am when God knows <clears throat> the truth. Well, there is beauty, beloved, in broken things. When I went to the potter's house, he put it on my mind to look up broken things. How do you mend broken pottery? How do you put the pieces back together? And even though this is an ancient Japanese art, I know this art has been handed down through multiple cultures, through the centuries. I also know here in America and throughout the world, they do not honor many of the things that um, the brothers and the sisters may have had a hand in as well. The beauty in broken things. When Moses went through that desert, he was a broken thing. When they put Yeshua HaMashiach up on that cross, he was a broken thing. But you see, when you're dealing with broken things, I want to 
share one of the things that comes out of it. There is a distinct beauty in its repair, in the repair of putting the pieces back together. You can have eight plates and one of them breaks. It's a broken thing. It may be you that is that eighth plate. When it is being repaired, years ago they would use sap and they would use gold dust or sometimes they would use black dust or silver or copper and it would create a unique beauty in bringing those pieces back together. The Japanese called it kintsugi, but <clears throat> one of the other things that it did if I can find it, it creates patterns, unique patterns that tell the story of the experience of that object. It also shows that the owner values it so much that they take the time to put the pieces back together and it creates a unique design where it will stand out from the rest of the cups or bowls or plates that it once looked identical to. One of the other things um, that they used, and I just want to show it, even missing pieces, they would fill it in with the sap or lacquer, mix it with gold, and you get this unique look. Now, one of the other things that you do, it's called wabi-sabi. This is a Japanese belief. The acceptance of impermanence and imperfection, an inevitable part of our world. There is beauty in imperfection. There is beauty. There is an art to the imperfection that will make it stand alone. I wanted to recognize this because this is where I first saw it. Although in my mind and spirit, I had already come to y'all about broken things. There is beauty in broken things. And even the gold that many times they mix the lacquer with. What is the goal? Okay, gold spiritual significance is linked to its association with the divine, okay, and the sun's life-giving properties. I'm going to use the sun of Yah instead of the sun in the sky. It symbolizes purity, wisdom, and spiritual attainment and represents the pursuit of spiritual growth and transformation. Broken things, beloved, broken things. There is beauty in broken things. I'm going to stop sharing for a moment. There is a story in that cup, in that bowl, in that plate, in that you, the broken thing. Those pieces has, have a history of how many times you tried, how many times you got up, how many times you didn't give up, even to the point of when you were broken, being humble enough to go to Yah and understand his thoughts, his ways, his power, nothing is impossible for him. And in the healing of you, those broken things in the healing of us, these broken things, you are set apart. A lot of times the things we go through make us set apart. And you have such a unique design, one all your own. The attributes, those things he deposited into you to bring those pieces back together. That when the bowl of you, the plate of you, the cup of you is set out 
with the other seven that it once was identical to. When you're set out at a dinner party, when you're set out and looked upon, people will reach for your beautiful, broken thing over the other ones that all look alike, that have assimilated. Because they can tell somebody took the time to put you back together again. Somebody threw a design on you that nobody could have imagined. And they don't understand the beauty of you was created when you were broken. That design on you, that gold that shines through, came because you were broken. And because you embraced the fact that I know I'm not perfect. I know I'm not permanent in this world, but I know where my father's house is. I'm going to the potter's house, standing before him in broken pieces, broken pieces. But never until he's finally done with us do we realize it is those broken pieces put back together that make you stand out from the other ones that look identical. You're the one they're going to reach for. You're the one they're going to examine. You're the one that's going to be looked at as who created this beautiful design, never understanding it was in your brokenness that your beauty shined through the most when you were put back together. Yes, beloved, when we recognize the beauty in broken things. The beauty of what Yah can bring out of us. The beauty of what Yah can do with us. The fact that we don't have to be perfect. And our imperfection is a unique beauty in and of itself. Yes, beloved, yes. When you don't fit in. When you can't fit in. When you want to go back to what you were and you can't go back. There is no going back to that original state anymore. There's beauty in broken things. And when he heals you and he dusts you over with gold to cover the cracks, to cover the fissures, to cover the brokenness, when he takes that lacquer, that sap, that epoxy, because once upon a time, they used tree sap as glue. <clears throat> put on gold dust or put on silver dust or put on copper or black coal to create color patterns in that broken thing. And it is in your brokenness that your beauty, your unique your set apart shines. And whether you understand it or not, and I believe you do, there is beauty and imperfection. Broken things, beloved, broken things. Standing at the potter's house where he makes us have a new understanding of ourselves. That those events that happened had to happen in order for us to come forth the way we've come forth. And there is nothing that says that thing that hurts you today, and yes, it does hurt, won't be the exact thing that makes you stand out above the rest tomorrow. That pain, that brokenness, the value of who you are and what you've done is still there. The history of you is still there. It's just put back together with a different design, beloved. Broken things. Standing at the potter's house. There is beauty in broken things. It is word, beloved. Shalom.